Hello students, welcome to e-learning with Divine Public School. We are continuing with the chapter 3 and this is the last lecture which we are going to study. Now in this last topic, we are going to take income elasticity of demand and the cross elasticity of demand. As we have already completed about price elasticity of demand, these are the two small topics from the price elasticity of demand, elasticity of demand that is income and cross elasticity of demand. So let's study how income elasticity of demand or how does the income affects the demand and their decrease now here as same like price elasticity you have find that there is a proportionate change in price which affects the proportionate change in demand the same way here also there is a proportionate change in uh, consumers income which affects the change in demand so it is the extent of change in demand for a good because of change in income of a consumer so you find that because there is a change in income of a consumer the demand of the product of that particular consumer will change now here as we have learned from the starting only here it is directly proportionate if income increases the demand increases if income get reduces the demand falls so this is how income elasticity of demand but at what uh, what degree it coming to uh, happen and what are the changes will be uh, known to us that can that are going to learn in the further in this topic so here just we have to remember that this is like same way like price elasticity of demand there it is inverse relationship here it is income and demand so it is having direct relationship now this also can be expressed with the help of formula now here first it says that income elasticity that is ey here y stands for income so this is you find that proportional change in demand due to proportional change in income so there was a change in demand because there was a change in income so what at what different change in income you find that uh, change in demand appears so that changes we have to study with the help of degrees so let's start with the degrees of income elasticity of demand now here there are three types of income elasticity of demand mainly that is positive income elasticity demand then after negative income elasticity demand and you find zero elastic zero income elasticity of demand so these are the three types of income elastic demand which we are going to study now let's start with the first one when the demand increases due to rise in income when there is a increase in demand due to rise in income or there is a decrease in demand due to fall in income of a consumer means it is directly proportionate then such type of changes is called positive income elasticity demand so if the income increases demand increases if income falls demand falls and this changes is called as what positive because it's showing us direct proportionate that is income rises demand rises income decrease demand decrease so this particular thing when it is directly proportionate that particular shows us there is a positive income elastic of demand now here again it has certain three types of uh, positive income elasticity of demand again it has been subcategorized now they are like unit income elastic demand that is which is equal to one elasticity of demand greater than unity that is more than one and elasticity of demand less than unity so these are the three types of degree of in positive income elasticity of demand now so let's learn in the detail with the first one now unit means one and one income elasticity means when the change in income and change in uh, income of a consumer and change in demand are both are at same proportionate or equal proportionate that time it is known as what you can say unitary income elasticity of demand same way you find it here uh, which we have learned in price also we have learned in price elasticity of the that is unitary unitary price elasticity so in that also there is change in proportional change in demand was same as proportional change in price so here also proportional change in proportionate means the degree of change that is suppose five percent change in income is that the income rise so demand of particular product also has rise by five percent so that particular change shows that five divided by five it is one and here we can say it is showing us unit income elasticity of demand then comes the second one elasticity of demand greater than unity unity means one so here income elasticity is greater than one when we can say when there is a change in demand is more or you can say it is greater than the change in income so the income has rise but the demand for that particular product has rise more than then the percentage of income suppose the income has rise by 10 percentage 
but the demand for a product has been rise by 15% so at that time 15 divided by 10 that is 1.5 you find that it is called as what greater than 1 so 1.5 is greater than 1 so it can be said that elasticity of demand is greater than unity so then this type of income elasticity of demand is known to be greater than unity then comes the third one that is elasticity of demand less than unity less than unity means it is lesser than 1 so it is same like relatively in um, we have studied relatively inelastic demand now let's see here it is when a change in demand is proportionately lesser than the change in income means here the demand has uh, changed but it is a minor change which has happened and there is a lesser change for example the income increased by 10 percent but the demand has increased by only five percentage so what will happen the change in income is more but the change in demand for the product has increase lesser than compared to income so that time you find that it is called as what uh, it shows the income elasticity of demand is known to be lesser than unity so this all are these changes are happening up because there is a direct relationship direct when there is a change positive change happening up in the income so income has increased yes income has increased demand has also increased so when demand and income are equal it is called as unit elasticity of demand but when demand increases more than the income you find it is called elasticity of demand greater than unity and same way when demand has increased but more than but not more than the income so you find that demand is increased but lesser than the proportionate change in income so that time you find that it is elasticity of demand less than unity so these are the three types of positive income elasticity of demand which we have to keep so it is equal to one it is greater than one and it is lesser than one so these are the three types of positive income elasticity of demand now let's go with the second topic that is the negative income elasticity now i hope you have been getting the thing that positive means it is having direct relationship so negative means it has to be something change so you find that with the rise in income of a consumer if a demand decreases means it shows inverse relationship or with the fall in income the consumer demand increases so it is like same way law of demand how it is working up but it is not price it is here taken income so if it is showing inverse relationship between the income of a consumer and the demand of a commodity that time you find that that is called as negative income elasticity of demand now just uh, thing in which cases this type of thing will happen when your income real income increases you find that the inferior goods the poor quality of goods that is given goods or inferior goods it shows negative income elastic because people who have been working if you just remember we have studied the reasons in price uh, law of demand so in that income substitution so income effect any substitution effect so in income effect we have studied that the inferior quality of goods which are there it shows the negative income elasticity why because those goods are only consumed when income has reduced so those in those goods demand will rise when your income has reduced or people with a low low income group try to consume this inferior types of goods or given goods which uh, when their incomes are less the demand will be more but when the demand uh, sorry when the income for that particular low income group rises that time they will store slowly moving up to the normal goods those goods which are consumed by normal people regularly those goods demand more increases more by them and you find that they will stop using this inferior quality of goods so this is how you find that negative income elasticity of demand is been there or we can say those person who are not working suppose you are suppose after 12th you are getting some part-time job or you are getting so first before that you are not working your demand was not there but now you have start working up so demand for normal goods have increased so this is what we can say with the increase in income you find that this is how it's happening up so here we can say inferior goods or given goods shows us negative income elasticity of demand then after you find that here examples of inferior we have known that bajra coarse grain coarse grain means poor quality or the uh, lower quality of grains permulian tail uh, oils we can say vegetable oils are there so these are the different types of we can say 
products which are being used when your income are less and it, this particular goods are demanded more but when when you find that when your income increases you will stop eating this bajra and coarse grain and you will start using the normal goods normal food grains which are been the pulses which have been there so this is what we can say that negative income ratio so it shows the inverse proportionate relationship between the income of a consumer and you find that uh, demand of that particular goods so here when income rises demand of this particular inferior and given goods becomes less when income falls the demand for this particular goods become uh, this particular goods rises up then comes the third one that is zero income elasticity of demand now zero means what you find that here when the change in income does not bring any change in demand for good means there is a change when it might be increase or decrease but the demand for certain types of goods does not change so what is happening it shows zero income elasticity of demand because because the change in change in income of a consumer change in income does not influence the demand so it does not affect the demand that's why it is called zero income elasticity of demand now here low price very low price goods like we can say salt pins matchsticks stapler pins so if no matter your income is high or we can say lowered but you find that this particular salt is been consumed by everyone so demand for that particular uh, good does not change so this is how you find that low price goods all is about and it shows zero income elasticity of demand same way matchsticks so salt and matchstick pins are there these are the three four things which we find at your home commonly and you find that the no matter whatever your income rises or decreases you this is some of the necessary things it is low price and which has been commonly found at every house so this is what we can say zero income elasticity of demand has been all about so the change in income does not influence the demand for this types of goods in at home if suppose your income rise will you purchase more of salt no it is also because it is as your need only you will demand nothing changes uh, if your income rises or decreases so this is all is about your zero income elasticity of demand now let's go with the next topic that is cross elasticity of demand now what is cross elasticity the word cross elasticity means it shows certainly opposite or something apart but here before knowing cross elasticity we have to know that it is talking about the two types of related goods that is substitute goods and complementary goods so here the definition says when a demand for consumed good the main product which you want to purchase commodity changes so if when its demand changes when in response to the change in price of their related goods so related goods are what substitute goods and complementary goods so those goods can substitute the consumed good or those goods which are jointly consumed with the consumed good if there is a change in price it affects the demand for your own concern good for example suppose there is a change in price of the we can say crude oil so it will definitely affect the demand for cars because it is a complementary good so you find that car and you find that petrol are complementary goods you cannot say like car can run on directly just as your if it is a petrol car you have you must you have to use petrol if it is a cng you have to go with that fuel cng so you find that if their prices rises it affects the demand for that particular uh, product also concern product also so that particular type of thing is called as what cross elasticity of demand so then the extent of such change in demand is called cross elasticity of demand so let us understand with again with the formula here that is cross elasticity of demand is proportionate change in demand of goods x to the proportionate change in price of good y suppose you find that like i told you the price of good y changes that is for example crude oil that is a petrol fuels all this particular uh, oil rises what will happen the demand for cars the heavy industries the that particular thing heavy machineries which are run on this particular fuels will become lesser so this is how you find that uh, cross elasticity is all about same way is suppose any substitute goods are there suppose bread and butter uh, you find that suppose there is more uh, more and more rise in price of butter you find that there is the demand for bread will become less because 
this the butter prices are more bread is consumed with butter most of the time many of the time so this is what is happening up so that is again a complementary but substitution goods for for example if a demand sorry price for pepsi decreases you find that ultimately there is a demand for uh, different goods like we can say uh sorry if a price of pepsi rises if more there is it becomes from 40 to 50 rupees suppose the same bottle so what will happen the demand for other products that is substitution product like thumbs up and coca cola it will rise so what are the substitute goods if one there is a change in price you find that automatically the demand for other will change if there is a increase in demand for for example uh, sorry if there is a increase in price of substitute goods the concerned goods demand will be more so this particular thing will be happening up and it has been shown and it has been known with cross elasticity of demand so here we have to go with related goods we have to keep in the concept about the substitution substitute goods and complementary goods which are been affected so that's why here proportional change in demand of x is due to change in price of good y that is a sub it may be a substitute good or it may be a complementary good i hope you have been clear with this all the types of elasticity of demand we have learned price elasticity of demand we have learned about income elasticity of demand today and cross elasticity of demand now cross elasticity of demand does not have only this particular topic only is there which you have to remember the definition as well as the formula so this is are the end to the chapter lastly some points that is methods of measuring elasticity of demand so what are the methods there are various methods which can be measured why because you find that many a times the change in price that is suppose if there is a 10% change in price you find that we cannot get the clear cut picture how much percentage exactly or how much percentage of change in demand will find for different particular uh, goods so that is cannot be measured for every goods commonly so here there are certain types of measuring uh, formulas or methods which to help us to measure the elasticity of demand now it can it are there are various methods but we are going to learn only the some common names that is method of proportionate change then after total outlay outlay is also known as expenditure so total outlay method or we can say total expenditure method also then after geometric method so these are the three types of methods which are commonly used to measure the elasticity of demand now this methods which we, we are not going to learn in detail but we have to remember about the need so this is the last topic this is the last conclusion which we are having so we have already learned about the total chapter law of demand and everything contraction expansion increase decrease individual demand market demand then after price elasticity elasticity of in that price elasticity of demand and then after today we learn about income which is directly proportional if it is in inversely proportional it becomes negative it is directly proportional it is become positive if there is no change in demand but there is a change in income it is zero then after comes the cross elasticity of demand that is if there is a change in price of a substitute or a complementary goods and it affects the demand for a concerned good that comes we can say it is called as cross elasticity of demand that is proportional change in demand for a particular product x due to change that is upon proportionate change in price of product y so that is called cross elasticity of demand where substitute goods and complementary goods are been taken into consider and lastly you find that so there are certain methods because you find that elasticity of demand does not show it differs from product to product and does not give us exactly if this 10% every 10% how much percentage of change in demand will be happening it differs from product to product and demand to demand of that particular use or usage of that particular product so we have no there are various methods but we have to know that there are three methods that is method of proportionate change then after total expenditure method and geometric method so these are the three types of measurement of elasticity of demand i hope you have been clear with all the topics of this chapter 3 if you find any difficulty anywhere any point you can message me you can call me and do write the notes you filled out just call me thank you uh, again one more thing that is uh, we are going to shortly will have a test for uh, each each chapter so start revising up start learning up uh, so find before that you just have to find the question answers for this chapter if you are having the pdf uh, 
you can go with page number 32 and 33 you can find there are short question answers and long question answers which you have to find again if you don't have any uh, book for it pdf for it just ask me i will send you the pics or the book thank you